All right, so welcome PNN. And uh, just a quick refresher for you guys. Uh, I've already been working heavily with Dan, with Wes, and a few of other of over the years. So I, I am the rep here in Northeast. Well, our firm is the rep for basically from Delaware to Maine for Ultravation. And uh, I've been primarily focused uh, for my team on New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and upstate New York. I've been in the industry now for over seven, going on eight years. But I've been around the block when it comes to training uh, companies like this and and doing a lot of coaching and a lot of sales and a lot of marketing. So anything that I can ever help you guys with outside of just product training, I'm happy to support you. So that being said, uh, here's the agenda. We're gonna clearly define IAQ technology. Uh, there's an important understanding between UVC lamp technology and UVGI technology. These are terms are being thrown around and we're making sure this is directly aligned with the ASHRAE recommendations, specifically chapter 62 of the ASHRAE handbook. And uh, obviously we're gonna focus on the products you guys brought in and the recommendations that align with ASHRAE and then differentiate some of the things from the competition. Uh, just to help you guys how, how you're aligning in the market uh, against other manufacturers that may already have product out there around you. So, Biggest question for if you're in sales or if a contractor you're talking to is uh, when, where, why? That's really that simple. So there's three main areas under the when, where, why. You're either talking about filtration, you're talking about UV disinfection, and or you're talking about UV air purification. So upper right-hand corner here, I'm just showing you a little mock-up of, uh, there's actually an Orion unit that we have on the market. I'll show you a little bit later in a better slide. That is our ionization technology. A lot of people have heard the term ionization. Ionization has been around actually longer than UV. It fell to the wayside, UV came in, and now ionization is also making a comeback. So I will talk a little bit about that just so you guys understand the differences and how they're being uh, put out there in the market right now. So, so here we'll, we'll get the, uh, the buzzwords and the definitions out of the way right away. UVGI, that is, if you go into chapter 62 of the handbook from ASHRAE, that's what you're gonna see written all over the place. UVGI, the term, is, is the term for the technology. So if your salespeople or your contractors are quoting and installing a UVC lamp-based product into an HVAC system, whether residentially or commercially, then you're actually applying UVGI technology. UVGI is not possible unless the products are using UVC wavelength bulbs. That is the clear dif differentiation. If anybody's trying to get you guys to sell or push a UVA lamp or a UVB wavelength lamp does not count. It has to be a UVC wavelength and I'll show you that in another slide. It is the most destructive and most disrupting form of UV light spectrum. That is why the CDC mentions it in their guidelines and that is why ASHRAE has always had it in their handbook and their guidelines. Uh, another big term that's being uh, getting more popularity out there is PCO. That is another layer of technology that is also not possible unless you had a UVC wavelength bulb. Uh, but we have products that have uh, titanium dioxide coated on the metal surfaces or infused into the carbon. And once the UV light is shining with a UVC wavelength, that activates that reaction and creates photocatalytic oxidation. It basically kicks it up a notch for air purification, deodorization, et cetera. And we'll explain that a little bit more as well. And then as I hinted, ionization, that is the term that's been around longer than all of this and back again. Uh, but ionization is that basically, if I had to short, short it up, it's a thunderstorm that you can install in your HVAC system. It's uh, when a lightning and thunderstorms are happening in the atmosphere, you're electrically charging particles in the air, positive and negative ions. And uh, that, uh, that helps when you do this in an HVAC system, that basically helps the particulates that are smaller than the human eye stick together and help your filter catch them better. So that's a quick explanation on that. I'm going to explain PCO a little bit better here with an actual video for you all. And so I'm going to switch the screen share and there will be sound. And this is a quick, very quick animation to help you understand how PCO works. Stand by. Here's how it works. The UV Photomax Advanced Oxidation Module is coated with an exclusive titanium dioxide formulation. When UV light is applied to the surface, the titanium dioxide coating becomes energized, causing it to release electrons. The electrons then combine with oxygen to create what are known as superoxides. The titanium dioxide then collects replacement electrons from moisture in the air to become charged particles known as hydroxyl radicals. 
together with the superoxides, a powerful photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO field, is created. As odors, germs, mold, and other VOC organic molecules approach the PCO field, they are disassembled as the oxidizers pull electrons from them. The purification process is completed, with the remaining molecules recombining to form simple water vapor and trace amounts of carbon dioxide. Ultravations advanced oxidation. All right, so the short summary of that animation is it doesn't have to be just on metal. That's just the animation we're showing you there. Uh, you guys have products coming in that have titanium dioxide on carbon bricks. Uh, the carbon bricks is actually better than a metal surface because the one thing the video doesn't show you is there's a byproduct of PCO called ozone. And for most of the population, ozone's not a big deal. People like that really sterile, clean smell. Uh, there's a very, very small percentage of the population that are a little sensitive to it. One of my buddies is a contractor. He went with carbon. He didn't like it. Uh, that's what Dan, Dan and I were working together on is to find those types of products that are going to align with that concern just to remove it. Like I have products installed in my house that are all carbon because I'm flipping this house into a rental in the next year or two when we find our next home. I don't ever want to have to worry about coming back and having to adjust the product and worry about a possible uh, weird percentile of a person that. Hey, he's back. Is he? Yep, here he is. Which I pay a lot of money for. You guys back now? We're there. What got, where did I get cut? We didn't leave, Scott, just so you know. Oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's Zoom, which I don't care how good their stock looks. Apparently, they're still not perfect. So uh, my apologies. So where did we end up? Where did where I get did cut? The video. Say you, again? Were, you were told at one minute mark of the video, and you said it doesn't have to be metal, and that's the last thing I heard. Perfect. Okay. Then, so you guys did watch the whole video. Perfect. All right. I noticed something pop up and I'm like, oh, don't tell me you're going to lock up. And it did. So great. So anyway, that's perfect because I was about to switch back to the presentation anyway. All right. So anyway, I'll, I'll finish my point and then I'll, I'll mute everybody again. But long story short, it doesn't matter if titanium dioxide is on a metal surface or infused into carbon. Uh, again, photocatalytic oxidation is not, process, not possible without the UVC lamp. Obviously, if you're using carbon, that's better uh, because it's going to remove any ozone smell as well. The carbon absorbs it. So, and that's what Dan and I were working on to bring products in that have that ability to so give you guys the ability to offer a zero ozone offering. And I'm going to get into those products here in a little bit. Uh, so screen share should be back up. Uh, one thing I wanted to finish explaining, and let me switch back here. All right. I did have another video I wanted to show you guys specifically on the ionization. Just to help people understand how that works. All right, there's no audio on this. This is your ionization or ion generator. Some of our products have ionization installed in, in the products as well. But long story short, this is how it works. It's generating an electric charge, positive and negative. This helps really, really small microparticulates even things as small as airborne VOCs and odors, uh, they're gonna bond together. And they bond together, they, make them up, they plump them up a little bit more, and that helps your filters actually catch more. So granted, not all filters are created equal. Some of our filtration is very high end. Uh, we have MERV 11, MERV 13 class filters, but the average person doesn't. So this is another technology that just helps you guys add more air purification, beef up filtration, residentially or commercially, uh, and also do things that are not specifically called out in ASHRAE guidelines, but benefit indoor air quality. So we find it important to at least train on it because we obviously have this technology in some of our products for a reason. And some people are completely against UV. I mean, again, if we're gonna push stuff in line with ASHRAE and CDC, we're really trying to educate people on UVC and UV, uh, UVGI tech, but there's still that rare person who just don't wanna touch it. Well, then we can at least help them with ionization because there's no ozone, there's no UV to, uh, happening at all in this device. This is simply, a thunderstorm in your HVAC system. So, all right, so that's ionization. I don't dwell too heavily on it because that's not a big part of our goal here today. Uh, we are here to talk about UVGI and UVC. So let me switch back over. All right. 
So as I was saying, and uh, let me kick the, oh, we are in the show, perfect. So that's it for the definitions. The, again, back to chapter 62 of ASHRAE. This is an image taken directly out of the handbook. Uh, they specifically are targeting education on Airstream and surface concerns. So if you're referring to surfaces, it's, air, it's disinfection. If you're referring to Airstream, it's air purification. Either way, you have to be using products that are using UVC wavelength bulbs to create that UVGI technology application. Uh, and again, if you guys don't have that link, I have it on our website. You guys can have any contractor download chapter 62 right out of the handbook. We found a public link just for that entire section as a PDF. That's been very helpful for a lot of contractors who maybe don't have the entire handbook and don't want to pay for it. So that being said, understanding UVC energy. So this is why you have to use these lamps. Uh, there's the ultraviolet spectrum. You got x-rays on the left. You got visible light on the right. You got UVA, UVB as you move away from the visible light. But UVC is the most dangerous form of ultraviolet light. And that is why it is being used and recommended for killing microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, et cetera. So that is why the CDC mentions it. That's why ASHRAE is aligned with it. So long story short, uh, the purple sphere down here is a great representation on uh, that. Basically, the very center is the tip of a bulb. So as light is emitting and glowing out from the bulb's surface, it's going to lose some of its potency as you move further away. So that's why they tell you, obviously, if you're only a few inches from the surface, you have a high microwatt level of potency coming off that bulb. Uh, once you move out to like 12 inches, okay, you still got a strong 1200 microwatt level, but if you go two, three feet away, you're not gonna have that level of intensity. So if we're talking about surface applications on, for example, coils inside of HVAC, residentially or commercially, that's why our bulbs are mounted usually within 12 inches or less of that surface area that we're concerned with. We wanna get maximum potency of UV light onto that to render things lifeless and make sure things are, basically you're inhibiting growth happening. So uh, that is the most destructive form. The good thing about UVC also is that once you've moved away and air is moving by, there's no, there's nothing dangerous in the air because it dissipates so quickly. The potency of the product is around the product. So that is also why these products need to be installed inside of HVAC equipment and inside of ductwork. You don't have this just sitting out in the middle of a room somewhere. Uh, not really a smart idea for the safety of the occupancy of the room. All right, so we're gonna finish up all the definition stuff now. Long story short, UVC is the lamp type and that is the section of the spectrum of, of UV light. All of our products are UVC, so that makes it easy for you guys. Uh, UVGI, that is the technology. So if you're installing any products UV, using a UVC lamp into an HVAC system, then you're applying UVGI technology. That is the long story short out of the ASHRAE guidelines and how they go on and on about it. Uh, UVC lamps used on a coil, great. I'm applying UVGI on the coil. If I'm taking UVC lamps and I'm installing them in the Airstream, great, I'm applying UVGI technology into an Airstream application. Um, upper room here, that's a, I'll show you guys a little bit, that's a product we have for wide open spaces. So in an upper room application, I would, commercially, I'd have UVGI technology in an upper room application. And that is actually specifically called out in the ASHRAE handbook as well. They have an entire section on upper room stuff regarding hospitals and wide open cafeteria spaces, things of that nature. And then uh, obviously, because we talked about PCO, if I'm installing a product with a UVC lamp, uh, I'm actually applying UVGI, for example, into the Airstream, but if the product also has PCO, then great, I'm applying UVGI technology plus PCO into the Airstream. And again, some of the products you guys brought in uh, will have that available. So this bulb is an important clarification for you guys. Not all bulbs are created equal. Uh, we do have standard, 9,000 hour life, one year life uh, bulbs like everybody else does. But we patented the T3 design to make a bulb stronger, better, and more potent. Uh, we figured out that, okay, well, if I could take this bulb and slide it into a quartz yeah. sleeve, then I have gas trap between the layers. I can actually insulate the bulb and protect the bulb. Say that again. So the beauty of that is I can make that bulb reach its peak potency because it's protected, it's insulated. Standard UV bulbs don't have that. We have those too, but the advantage of this is if you look at the graph down here, a standard UVC bulb, you're gonna get about 70 to 80% uh, burn po potency off that bulb. But if it's the middle of summer and you got cold air flowing by those bulbs all the time, 
they're never going to reach their peak burn rate. So uh, the, the beauty of insulating it like we've done in that design is you're going to get that 100% capability out of the bulb. So that's why we have products residentially that have the option of going T3 or not, uh, which Dan and I went over. Uh, and then all of our commercial products pretty much are all T3 for that exact reason. We want to get maximum uh, UVC wavelength illumination coming out of these bulbs. And this is how we've done it. And that's why I always try and clarify that competition out there, not all bulbs are created equal. So if we're moving products that have a T3 bulb in it, that's because it's beefed up, it's a little stronger, and it's going to burn a lot better, and you're going to get a lot more disinfection rate out of it. So that being said, uh, if you have a product with our T3 bulb in it, that is a two-year life lamp. Non-T3, one-year life. Most products on the market are one-year life bulbs. Everybody says that your bulbs or your lamps have a two-year warranty. That's true. All of our stuff has two-year. But all you're warrantying is saying, great, the bulb is going to light up and glow for two years. But a standard non-T3 bulb, you only get a 9,000-hour life cycle out of that. Once you've hit that one-year life, you're probably lost about 40 to 60% of the potency of the bulb, and you're already on a downward curve going into year two. So people who are trying to milk out two years of a non-T3 bulb, not a good idea. You're not going to have your disinfection rate that you're trying to achieve. So non-T3 bulbs, you should be on an annual PM cycle, swapping bulbs out every single year. T3 bulb, good. You're good for 18,000 hours. You're good for two years. Come back every two years on your PM cycle. That's how it works. So that's a short and skinny on bulb differentiation. So again, that's our patented design, so we can brag about that. <laughs> now, love this graph. Uh, this is in our commercial literature, but I like to apply for residential too. Uh, the blue signifies our UV matrix SI. I'll show you guys that later. That's our coil surface area solution for commercial applications. And then the green is our AS, which is our Airstream application. So I could take the product out and just focus on why it, it, this is important. So at the very bottom here, you have things like streptococcus uh, and surface area bacteria, things of that nature. Up high, you're, as you climb this chart, you're getting more airborne concerns with airborne viruses like influenza A, echo virus. So what they're telling you here is this. If I'm just trying to solve for dirty coils, more efficient coils, and I want to make sure I'm, not, I'm removing this science experiment that could be happening inside of my system, then great. I mean, if I put a coil solution on, I'm going to be fine with stuff like streptococcus. because I got a 99% disinfection rate. I'm going to get a little bit of airstream as the air is passing by too, you know, moving over the bulbs. But if, I, if I'm trying to solve for airborne virus concern, well, then I can't just do coil. I need to put something also into the airstream to add a, a, another level of air purification and air disinfection to reach the goals of heat, hitting that 99 percentile. So if I was trying to solve for echo virus, which is a very dangerous airborne virus, well, then I need to make sure I'm doing coil to you know, take care of that inter internal environment and then adding on an airstream solution. So I love explaining this now because then as we move into the products for you guys, you understand why coil plus airstream is important. And some of our products are designed for that exact reason to help, uh, help people understand that. You can't just slap a bulb in and say, I'm done. Uh, that's why commercially, especially Wes and I have talked about this, it's important to help people ask the question, what am I trying to solve for? What is my goal? Uh, all I could do is tell you what we recommend, and then in the end, if the consumer doesn't want to spend the money, then they're going to be missing certain levels of, of disinfection rate if they're looking to achieve that. So residentially, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't need to go into all of it. A long story short, everything from filtration to ionization, there's the Orion generator, to mini split ductless solutions. Our M series is a universal kit. That's a huge market. That's a very popular product. We even have portable air purifiers to handle room by room applications. Um, there's our advantage we'll get into that you guys are bringing in the advantage power PCO, which is its steroid brother. Uh, and then we have high end induct solutions like our Solaris and our catalyst. I actually have the catalyst installed in my house and long story short, we're targeting everything from large particulates through filtration to micro particulates all the way down to the molecular and biological level. Uh, that's the point of trying to, be a one-stop shop when it comes to IAQ. So just want to flip over a screen here because I'm going to switch something else out. There we go. That's what I wanted. And bring that back for you guys. All right. So let's get into it. Advantage. Why is this cool? It's a throwaway product. Nobody else figured it out. 
<laughs> we have all the high-end stuff. We always had the high-end stuff. You guys uh, saw it too. We, we said, how can we help contractors create a good, better, best scenario? But the problem is for a lot of people coming in on the good, it was still too high. So a lot of our higher end stuff is lifetime warranty. This doesn't need to be a lifetime warranty product. It's, it's always in warranty because it's a throwaway design. So the lamp modules have a completely different design to it. Uh, you, you just come back as a contractor, take the two screws out, grab that black module, pull the whole thing out and throw it away. Uh, so all the electronics are in that little black head and there's no lamp, there's no high end lamp monitoring or ability to daisy chain other products off of it. It's just simply, Hey man, I just want to get UVC wavelength technology into an HVAC system and not worry about it. Uh, you're only gonna have to get it with this PCO module on it. We just show you that you have the accessory capability. Uh, so at the most stripped down level, you could just order these lamps and install them over a coil and you're done. If you want to give up customer, the ability to have some PCO added on, then great, this is an accessory module. Uh, the, advantage of the, the advantage of the advantage is that we made it available in multiple ways. You can get it component by component, have the PCO module sit there as an accessory. You can get it automatically in the box with the PCO module. And then we have like a full package where you get the advantage plus the PCO, plus the, the directional light shield if you need that. So there's many different ways of doing that. Uh, but long story short, we make it in a 12 inch and a 17 inch to candle most residential coils. And you could even get it in a T3 option as well. Uh, there is a non-T3. So if you want to go bottom dollar uh, and not have the T3 to your life, you could do that too. Uh, so scalability, T3 or not, being able to physically mount it or magnetically mount it, we try to make it as versatile as possible, but keep it at a very low price point uh, because it's not our higher end stuff. Now, a quick reminder too, it doesn't matter if it's that product or our higher end stuff, all of our product line is pro trade only only through distributors like you guys it is only here uh for a pro trade relationship if people find stuff online we're not selling it uh that could be a contractor who might have bought a ton of lamps opened up his own online store and trying to move it that way uh, we don't recommend it these are again i hinted at uvc wavelength is a very dangerous wavelength uh it could damage your eyes it could damage your skin uh professionals only should be working with this stuff so here's the power pco same exact lamp module we just kicked it up a notch. Uh, this SKU only comes as a T3 uh, because we've added more surface area with that titanium dioxide we talked about to create more PCO. So you have the carbon strip and you have the two extra metal shields on here. So all three, the carbon plus the two metal shields are coated in titanium dioxide. So you're getting way more photocatalytic oxidation happening. And because you have the T3 bulb, which is insulated and protected, you get even more uh, UVC happenings. Long story short, this thing is going to do way stronger work than the basic advantage. Uh, and again, the this, way this installs, you can still get this over a coil if you put this in a plenum. But as you can see, the, the, the whole apparatus is a hair bigger. So you're not going to be sliding this under an A coil anytime soon. You might have to go above. Uh, but long story short, we did confirm that we can get this also in the 12-inch or 17-inch uh, model as well. But again, it's T3 only standard. You're creating a lot more PCO, a lot more air purification happening here. And uh, again, because it's T3, this is your two-year lamp life product. So from a PM cycle, you're only coming back and changing bulbs every two years. The cool thing is once this is installed, again, you're just unscrewing uh, the, the end there with the black module, pulling the lamp out, throwing it away. So everything else stays inside the ductwork or inside the plenum if that's where it's installed. So... We have two higher end solutions here. We have our Solaris and then we have our Catalyst, which I have. Uh, I, it's important to differentiate the Solaris because this has everything. We took our UV, we took our ionization, the thunderstorm in the box, and we took everything and put it in this thing. Uh, the advantage of this and the reason why we still talk about it as well as the Catalyst here is because these are our higher end residential solutions. These are both lifetime warranty products available. Uh, these both have the higher end bulbs. The difference is the reason we talk about the Solaris so much right now is that is considered the direct competitor against the Remy Halo. So RGF is a major competitor and Remy Halo is really popular in the market. The reason why we have to mention this is because the Remy Halo has ionization in theirs as well. So whereas our catalyst here that I have does not have ionization, but I wanted a zero ozone product for my home. I wanted the maximum UV T3 potency. I wanted all the PCO. I got a lot of PCO coming on this thing because of three strips of carbon on, on the module, but I don't have the ability to have ionization. 
which is not the end of the world. If I really wanted ionization, I'll just buy the Orion generator and stick it in my return before the filter and I have it too. But we talk about the Solaris because it is important to help people understand the competition out there. So that unit will give you the add-on of the thunderstorm fresh air. The advantage of both these products, you'll notice in the notable options here, is we can add on our easy light for the coil. Because remember, these are induct solutions for Airstream. But I, per ASHRAE guidelines, we can't ignore the coil surface. So Solaris, and what you guys like is the catalyst like I have, I can add on easy light. So the advantage there for the contractor is I only have to wire one thing. I wire the power to the power head of the catalyst or the Solaris, and then I order the accessory, the easy light, and then I just, that easy light comes with a Y jack, and I just plug it into the back end of the uh, catalyst power head. So now as a contractor, I have to wire one thing. I wire the induct solution, the main unit, and then I just take my accessory lamp that comes with a directional shield, mount that down over the coil, and that wire will plug right into the catalyst or the Solaris, and I'm done. So now I'm taking care of surface and I'm taking care of Airstream. So that is the advantage of the higher end lifetime warranty solutions. Plus, you know, these power heads are a little beefier. They've got the lamp monitoring on there. So if the lamp fails, that will actually alert on the power head. So you have lamp monitoring built in. It is a lifetime warranty product. So if anything ever failed, it's going to fail in that power head. So for a contractor, the alteration just ships them the whole new power head block. They just rip the bad one off, slap it on. They never have to take anything back out of the plenum, out of the ductwork, anything. So that's a huge advantage of the higher end stuff. So that's your kind of like your good, better, best tiering there. So uh, as I hinted though, I do want to clarify for people why we talk about the Solaris and or the Catalyst, because you're going to see both here. Uh, this cross-reference I we created only because of the Remy Halo getting so popular. So I just want to make sure this you guys have understand why we talk about this because I'm actually going to include the catalyst, which is what you guys brought, I believe brought in. So this is picture the Solaris and our catalyst here on the left. And then there's APCO is another competing product. And then the Remy Halo on the right. The reason why we talk about this is because everything we have is overly engineered and way better. <laughs> um, real quick on terms, active PCO versus passive PCO. If I had my catalyst sitting right next to Solaris, the, select, the Catalyst and the APCO product are passive PCO because they have carbon. So because you have carbon, that's a zero ozone product. The carbon's absorbing the ozone, so yay. Uh, the Solaris and the Remy Halo are technically not. They are active PCO products. They're actively always generating PCO, always generating ozone because they don't have any carbon on them. There's no carbon to pull that back out of the air. So that's the advantage of the Catalyst and the APCO is that they're passive. They are true zero ozone products because of the carbon technology. So that being said, whether it's a Solaris or our Catalyst, uh, we have way better bulbs in here than what the Remy or the APCO have. Uh, from an engineering standpoint, our Catalyst has three full strips of carbon, for example, whereas that APCO only has one. If you look at the APCO, the APCO is actually closer to our, our power PCO advantage. So again, Solaris versus Remy Halo, we give you 200 square inches of metal surface treated with titanium dioxide. They only give you 26. Uh, again, with our catalyst, it's three full strips of carbon, plenty of reaction surface going on for PCO. Uh, their, their reactors are smaller as far as the ballast that is on the device. Ours, our, everything we have is built way better. Everything's made in Vermont. So everything we do is stainless steel, aluminum. We're not playing around with plastics. Again, Remy Halo, they got a lot of plastic and aluminum. Uh, the PCO process from the Solaris or our Catalyst, again, way stronger. We're actually working with a very specialized uh, patented mix we have that uses silver, whereas uh, they're using zinc. But silver's been proven to work better with a pathogen factor. So as far as adjustability, our Catalyst does not have to be adjustable because there's three full strips of carbon on there. There's no adjustability needed for ozone. With the Solaris and the Remy Halo, they give you the ability to adjust them to try and dial back some of that PCO reaction in case people are sensitive to the ozone. So you can adjust them. It's just, it's not a true zero ozone product like our Advantage with carbon, like our Advantage Power PCO with carbon, like our Catalyst with carbon. Uh, and again, we give you guys more adjustability without blocking the UV. If you try to adjust a Remy Halo, you actually get little panels that slide and block these openings. So the fail on their design is that you're blocking the UV light from coming out too. So, I mean, great. I'm glad I have PCO and I can adjust the PCO, but you should never block the UV light. That's not good. Uh, and again, our higher end stuff, everything we do on the high end, we have lamp monitoring built into the power heads. Uh, again, the Solaris has the 
thunderstorm technology in, included. Uh, so we have twice as much as they do if you ever need somebody to look for that. Uh, again, expandability, the catalyst and our Solaris, you can add on a coil lamp easily. Nobody else does that. So we're making it simple for plug and play. That's a huge win for the contractors. And again, Catalyst and our Solaris is lifetime warranty. Remy Halo doesn't. They only give you a two-year warranty on the PCO ballast, a five-year on the main ballast, and their fine print says no warranty on parts that are outsourced. So I was like, okay, so what? Every other thing that you didn't build is not warrantied? We don't care. Lifetime warranty, done. So we're not going to play games with people. Just keep it simple. And uh, people don't seem to read the fine print. So that being said, again, Catalyst, I, I'm a big fan of. But to be fair, if we're trying to directly compete against Remy Halo, the Solaris is the closest competitor because of the ionization being included. Uh, but again, we can always add on our Orion generator for that. Portable air purification. This is big. Residentially or commercially, I found that there are sites where there is no ductless installed or there is no duct work and there is no main HVAC system. So this has become an unsung hero because inside this cute little unit, it's only nine inches by nine inches by three inches high. We have a full strip of carbon right there at the exit point on the front of the device. There's a turbine fan underneath, and there's a UVC lamp in there, and there's even a washable filter in there. So there's actually a filter, UV, and PCO going on in a simple little desktop portable device. I've actually had contractors use this to just to prove to a customer that this stuff works. They'll, they'll go onto a job site, leave that in one target room, and then tell them, hey, in a couple of days, let me know if you don't notice your allergies improving in that, in that space or you don't notice cleaner air. And then this has actually become like a cell tool because then they can just pull that out and say, great, let's talk about a better solution. So this has been a great unsung hero for that. Uh, again, spaces that you need up to 500 square foot of treatment, but there's no ductless installed, there is no HVC. Maybe somebody expanded a space over the garage and then never, and they turned into a living area and they never put a proper HVAC solution in. Uh, so again, desktop counter, super small. You can see with the keys there, it's not a very large device. It's stainless steel, super sharp. So that's a great little uh, product if you ever needed it. And uh, as I hinted, ductless is huge. The M series has been a great product for us. It's a universal kit. Uh, contractors, it's easy because it's auto sensing for power. It doesn't care if it's a 110 or a 240. It's just going to pick what it needs. Uh, it's got a built-in lamp monitor as well. And you're basically putting lamps inside of a ductless head, which is basically a Petri dish on the wall. If contractors are not cleaning these ductless heads on a PM cycle, they can get really nasty, especially after about two to three years. And especially if these are in commercial environments like restaurants, uh, bars, anything with yeast, beer, I've seen some funky heads and they get bad. So the advantage of this kit is, hey, as long as that UV light shining up inside that head on the coil, as everybody knows, if you ever worked on a ductless head, those filters that they're on there, I don't even know why they call them a filter. I call it a dust bunny screen. It's not really trapping that much. So there's a lot of particulates passing through that head, getting on the coil surface, getting on the blower wheel, and then you add in moisture uh, due to humidity issues, et cetera, and you've got a nice little science experiment happening. So this has been a great product for us. We've done very well with it. You don't have to install both lamps. Uh, they actually give you a bypass module in the kit. So if you have a really, really small head or a very small surface area, you can just plug one lamp in and keep the next one for next year to change it out. Uh, these are not T3. So this is an annual 9,000 hour cycle rotation for PM. Uh, but this has been a great product to keep heads from getting funky and smelly. Uh, this is actually a live photo I took on the right. This was a Mitsubishi head install we did up in the Poconos of Pennsylvania in a contractor's office. Uh, they hadn't cleaned it in three years. And uh, once we opened it up, the office manager woman who was in the office was not happy. She actually left and didn't come back for a couple of hours because she knew that there was a problem and no one wanted to admit to it. So they ended up cleaning the head and then putting this kit in. Uh, so that was a nice win for us. And uh, hopefully that office manager still works there. She was not happy. There's a lot of black stuff uh, coming out of it. So there's the Orion, our ion generator. Again, this technology is in the Solaris product, not in the Catalyst product. Uh, but that's fine. Like I said, if I want to go zero ozone, I put the catalyst in. If somebody wants the extra ionization, I can just add this in and that's a, a standalone unit. Uh, this is pretty much like generates probably three times the ionization than our competitors. Uh, a lot of our big competitor is New Calgon. They got some kind of little uh, clunky plastic looking device that they charge a lot of money for us. We beat them on price and we beat them on ionization for that. Again, nice stainless steel design. Uh, you can mount it inside the equipment, outside the equipment. Uh, we make the electrodes there flip down. So if you don't have the space inside the equipment, you just drill two holes. 
slide it through, mount it up, and you're good to go. Uh, so this has been popular, not just residentially, but people use these for ice machines and PTAC units as well. We've had people use the, ion, the, the UV kit for the mini splits on that as well. So you could kind of move them around. The M-Series was originally primarily you know, created for ductless, but it's gotten some universal kit use out of it too. So as again, just a complete IAQ as a whole, we do all the filtration. I'm not going to get into it, but we do everything from support boxes to right angles to straight throughs. Everything is a high class MERV 11, MERV 13 filter only. We don't go below that because we're IAQ focused. A lot of contractors have been afraid of going above MERV 8 over the years due to pressure drop issues. Well, we have the graphs to prove it. We don't have the pressure drop issues because in our pleated filters, we give you 32 feet of filter. So that's a lot more surface area than our competition. So we don't have to weave them as tight because we have so much more surface area doing the work. So we don't have that pressure drop concern. So when I have guys, uh, the, un the unsung here is that support box, it's huge. Uh, people love it because the filter's already integrated, it's insulated, it's powder coated. We could, we could color match these uh, Blue Hawk uh, wholesalers. We color match for free and then we'll help the contractor do private labeling on the doors. So we'll match these to any brand of equipment out there because everything is done in Vermont at the factory. We have our own paint shop. So uh, that's a nice high-end solution for filtration to complete the IAQ offering. Uh, so at this point, we're gonna, this will be a little bit faster process. Residentially, has got a lot more going on. Commercially is important right now. Wes and I have been working on a couple of projects, helping just people understand, hey, all of Ultravation's commercial products, it's just called UV Matrix. So UV Matrix is all, every, anything commercially related is UV Matrix. The difference is there's different versions. So SI, for example, is surface area. AS, Airstream related. 4X, that's because it's got a NEMA 4X rated enclosure on it. That's for an external application. You want waterproof. You don't want all the technology inside the equipment. Maybe it's too small of a rooftop. That's what that's for. Uh, and then we have upper room. This is going to be an important part as I close the training out because this was something big overseas in Europe. And we didn't see a huge influx here in this country until now. Now people are applying upper rooms for wide open spaces. And I'll show that to you guys. So as I said earlier in the training, whether you're a salesperson or you're a contractor, always be asking, what am I solving for? What am I looking to accomplish, right? Because you can go coil, you can go dedicated airstream. And there's that graph I showed earlier. You have to be looking at if people are concerned with bacteria and viruses and they want to get a maximum disinfection rate, you've got to be looking at both situations. So that being said, SI racks, uh, this is going in those big rooftops. You know, I mean, I got, I've got applications that are, they need two racks wide and three racks high of bulbs because these are huge coils. So it just depends. This is why we have a special uh, sheet that I already sent Wes and we can resend out the whole company, but we have a commercial applications guideline, kind of like a check sheet. You can interact with it. It's an Adobe PDF document, but we ask for measurements of coil sizes, et cetera. So we could determine if it's too small, it doesn't need the SI. Uh, maybe it needs uh, the NEMA 4X option because we can get you different length of bulbs on this. We can go one or two bulbs. And again, all the technologies in that encased unit outside of the equipment. So all you have to do is cut access holes to get the lamps in. And now you're able to accomplish uh, a, a proper disinfection process on a product that couldn't handle the full rack of bulbs. So uh, this is a great option for those types of situations. And then we even have an easy light feature too that have standalone bulbs just with uh, lamp, lamp, lamp shielding on it. But this is popular for our Airstream. If people are trying to gain maximum disinfection rate uh, for airborne viruses, and you have these big, massive supply ducts on a commercial job, that's where the AS comes in. I'll put the SI racks in on those big rooftops in the coils where I put the 4Xs in there, but if they're trying to really amp up a disinfection rate for airborne viruses, you have to be basically doing an AS solution uh, in the supply duct. And sometimes you only have three bulbs, maybe four bulbs. Some ducts are so huge in width that you might need one of these on one side of the duct coming in and one on the other side of the duct coming in and the bulbs meet in the middle because they're so wide across. Uh, there's a rule with airstream disinfection that you have to have about 80% or greater coverage area of a UV bulb passing through that duct work. So as the air is moving by at a high rate of speed, that's what determines quantities of bulbs, the bulb distance across the duct work, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I know this will generate a lot of questions at the end, but this is uh, very important for us to clarify. This is the upper room. I never trained on this ever until this year. Uh, I didn't even know this existed. I had no idea we made it. It was something they were selling overseas. Now this is becoming popular again. 
upper room is already called out in chapter 62 of the ASHRAE guidelines in the handbook. They actually specifically show you uh, mock-up images from a old hospital in New York City that's no longer there. And there's also a, another application in a wide open cafeteria they show in Brazil, but they show you how these small little boxes are with two UV lamps in it, no motors, no fans. Uh, you have to have a minimum height of seven feet, minimum uh, mounting height, because this is obviously for probably a wide open commercial space, but this is convective air. So air naturally is moving throughout a wide open space. You have cold air on the bottom, hot air on top. So these boxes are to help increase air irradiation, right? Dealing with wide open spaces uh, and helping get disinfection rate increased in a wide open space. So now we're getting a lot of inquiries on this again, uh, because again, this was already in the handbook. It's already called out. It, it was already been proven and we just never had a big demand for it. So this is something that's popping up more and more. I want to make sure you guys knew about it. Uh, it long story short, we're showing you top down here, looking down as you move further away from the box, obviously your level of radiation is dissipating and being less strong. So that's why these small boxes are only designed to handle about 200 to 225 square feet. So in large wide open rooms, they may need more than one of these installed to handle the entire space. Uh, so this is something, again, commercially, we're going to need to know what they're looking to accomplish. Uh, this is really historically was an add on. If you've already addressed the HVAC system for that commercial building, rooftops got coil lamps, you got an AS series and a supply duct, you don't necessarily need these. But if people are trying to increase a, a disinfection rate in a wide open cafeteria, a huge lobby, uh, things are a massive hallway, that's where this stuff gets added in at. And again, I just never did a lot with it before. So again, here's just another example of, again, how the air irradiation looks as you move further away from the distance. So this is a top-down view on the left. If that box was in the middle, as you move away, you're getting increased distance, you're getting less uh, disinfection rate. And that's why when they lay out a room, they gotta figure out, okay, well, this much square footage, this much distance, how many boxes do I need, et cetera. So again, no motors, no fans. You just power these up so they have power and you're done. And again, all of our commercial products, whether it's the SI racks, where it's the Airstream stuff, whether it's the upper room, the NEMA 4X, Everything is auto power sensing. So we don't care how that room was originally wired or that equipment was wired. The commercial stuff will pick the power it needs and can be fine. That's up to 277. If you got a big job site that's running like 400 plus voltage on the equipment, you will have to give us some type of knockdown to get us at least into the 270 world. Um, so as a reminder, I'm also your pro on thermostats rep. I'm the rep for PDM line sets here in the Northeast, Red Devil Cox of Silicones. We, we actually, Thermoflex, uh, you guys work with us as well. Uh, we have actually special IAQ focused uh, flex duct as well. Thermoflex has a whole commercial division and we have flex duct that the cores are antimicrobial. Nothing can grow in it. So there's other ways we can help you guys with some IAQ targets, uh, depending on the contractors you're working with. So I always like to remind people of that. So that being said, we can move towards a ending here and let me stop recording.